So in this video, we will make these three different fabrics which have raised textures using displacement map. I will be working on this sweater which is draped on a hanger. I'm only going to be changing the visual textures of the fabric and I'm not going to simulate so the fall of the garment will not change. I'm opening the render window so I can see the fabric before I've applied the displacement map. I'm going to start with the rib on the neck. So I have a couple of rib and knit textures that I have downloaded from the internet. So I'm just going to apply the rib texture onto the fabric. Next, I'm going to make my displacement map on Photoshop. So I have my texture here and here are the panels that I need to be raised and this is the area I need to be lower. I'm going to start by selecting the first panel of the raised area on my texture. Once that is selected, I'm going to use a create new fill tool to fill that with a white solid color. I'm going to copy and repeat these panels to cover all of the areas in my texture that need to be raised. And then I will merge these layers to make them one. You can see here that my white panels coincide with the area of my texture which is raised. Next, I'm going to fill the lower surface of my texture with a black color using the create new fill tool again. And I'm going to merge my black and white layers together. The next step is to add a blur. I'm going to use the blur filter and select Gaussian blur. We add blur on displacement map so that the surface, the raised surface has very smooth edges and they're not ragged. Once I have added blur, I have my displacement map ready. I'm going to save this as a JPEG file. Here you can see that my texture and the displacement map I have created are coinciding perfectly. All of the widths of my panels on my map and the textures are same in size. All the white panels coincide with the higher ones and all the black panels coincide with the lower ones. Now I'm going to add my displacement map onto the fabric properties. Once I have my displacement map and my texture in place, I'm going to resize this. We resize the displacement map and the texture together because the displacement map is created in the original dimension of the texture or the graphic. In order to get the both to be the exact same size, we scale the texture and the displacement map together. So I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and I will decrease the width so that my texture is scaled down proportionally. I'm going to refine my displacement map by reducing the particle distance. This step is required only if we are working with an image that is of a very low resolution. Next, I am going to reduce the thickness of my fabric or the displacement map by reducing the amount of my displacement map. So the amount here refers to the amount that the texture or the surface has been raised. So as soon as I reduce my amount, you can see that the thickness of my fabric on the rib has also reduced. Next, I'm going to add the knit texture onto the body. Up 
I already have a displacement map of the knit ready. I will just quickly show it to you on Photoshop. So this is my displacement map and you can see that the texture has thinner grooves and a wider raised area which is why my displacement map also has wider white panels and the black panels are very thin and they coincide perfectly with the grooves as well and the white panels coincide with the raised area. So I'm going to add this displacement map onto the fabric properties and I'm going to reduce the amount and the particle distance to refine my displacement map. So you can see here that it's a thick texture on the knit has been created and you can also see the difference between the rib on the neck and the knit on the body as there was a difference in the displacement maps and the width of the white and black panels on both displacement maps. I will now work on two examples using only displacement maps without a texture or a print. I'm going to delete the texture and the displacement map from the fabric assigned to the body. So here I have a displacement map of a crocodile leather made using an image from the internet. So the grooves and the rises in this fabric have already been mapped out. I'm going to add that to the fabric properties. Reducing the particle distance. Now I'm going to change the thickness of my texture by reducing the amount. I'm going to ch also change the fabric preset of this fabric to a leather. And also add a leather normal map to this. This would make the fabric look more realistic or look much closer to that of leather. So you can see that the fabric looks more like leather now. I'm also going to change the color of this fabric slightly so that the texture is more visible. So here our crocodile leather texture is also ready. Our next example is a snakeskin texture. So here I have my displacement map of snakeskin also already mapped out using an image from the internet and following the same process as the previous maps. Once again, I am going to control the thickness of the texture by reducing the amount. I will not change the normal map or the preset because this is also a leather fabric. So here you can see that my sneak skin texture is also ready. So here are the three different textures that we have made. We can also add a print or texture to the leather examples by adding a colored texture file to them. 